Whether it's limelight came from animated hamsters with swagger, your uncle harassing it on Facebook, or the fact that this was a big step forward for the brand, the Soul was the first Kia in a long time to really grab attention. And today, I'm gonna see if it deserved that. If you enjoy fun, detailed car content without the fluff, consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications. Introduced for the 2010 model year, before this car and the Kia Forte that was launched alongside it, Kia was known for making cheap, agreeable people movers. Outside of its weird shape, nothing about the Kia Rondo was exactly heart-throbbing. But the Kia Soul did have some flair. And uh, they really tried to beat that into your face with the trim levels. You start out with the base sole trim, and then on top of that, you'll have the plus. Not spelled out plus, just a, a plus sign. And then on top of that, you'll have the exclaim, which is signaled with an exclamation point, as is logical. And on top of all of those is sport. And the car itself was redesigned in 2014. Technically, this competed in a very niche segment that was previously just occupied by the Scion XB and the Nissan Cube. It kind of sits in between a regular hatchback and a small crossover SUV. This model here is a base. If you went up to the Plus, you would have body-colored mirrors. Fog lights were optional on the Plus, standard on the Exclaim, but if you really wanted your soul to stand out, you would get the Sport trim. This included tweaked bumpers, a sportier tuned suspension, and a spoiler, among other things. But just like MySpace, the Sport spec was axed for 2012, but the Exclaim gained more swagger then with color-keyed bumpers. Before we continue, I'd like to thank Royal South Mazda Volvo for granting me the wonderful privilege of driving the Kia Soul for this review. The staff there are friendly and knowledgeable. If you're looking for a small town buying experience, check them out. Powering the Kia Soul at the base level was a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated dual overhead cam in line four. For 2010 and 2011, this was multi-port fuel injection. It didn't have direct injection. And it made 122 horsepower and 115 pound-feet of torque. With the five-speed manual here, which was standard for this engine, it moves. But I'll do a zero to 60 here soon to see what the flat-out performance is. Before 2012, non-base specs got a fairly reliable iron block two-liter that gave this 20 more horsepower. Unlike the base engine, the two-liter offered a four-speed auto if you couldn't wrangle the five-speed manual. In 2012, there was a mid-cycle refresh and the car got one direct injection for the 1.6 liter, giving you 138 ponies and more torque as well. And then the transmission choice became a six speed manual or a s rat. And then the transmission choice became a six speed manual and a six speed automatic. But that engine was still only in the base trim. If you stepped up to the plus or exclaim, you got a healthy boost in power. So that really transformed the Kia Soul, especially when you combo that with the six speed transmissions. Traction control was standard in every year, as was ABS. And another little update there for 2011, they actually uh, retuned the rear suspension. So it's still a torsion beam setup back there, but that was supposed to help with a kind of unsettled highway ride. Now, in the off chance that you actually care, we're gonna find out what the zero to 60 is in a 2011 Kia Soul. For this, I'm going to shut off traction control. I'm going to shut off the AC. We'll talk about the clutch here in a second. It's kind of weird. I don't see this doing all that well. I'm gonna try my best. A lot of wheel hop. Oh, man, I did not like doing that. There was a decent amount of wheel hop there. I wasn't banking on it really being able to spin that much. You might be able to knock that time down a little bit, but honestly, that felt like I kind of gave it its all. Admittedly, I rushed my launch, but searching for speed with a base Kia Soul is more hopeless than responding after she sends a single LOL. It really runs out of steam after 40 miles per hour, but the aggressive gearing does mean good takeoffs and comfortable city driving. Around town, the power feels healthy. For race fans, the refreshed 2-liter models could knock that 0-60 to into the mid-8s with enough practice on the stick. 
but likely more of the Kia's sales success came from the distinct looks and proportions than the daring performance. While this is admittedly a very, very low bar, I think this is the best looking of the toaster vehicles that were around at this time. And this model here, unlike most Kia Souls, was actually treated with respect. It looks pretty clean. You have nice steel 15 inch wheels covered with hubcaps there. The Plus car saw 16 inch wheels, whereas the Exclaim and Sport got 18 inches. And honestly, those upper trim models really did have a standout look for the class. I know these are really easy to rag on, but let me know what you guys think in the comments section about this and what car in the class you think looks better. When it comes to features, my car here doesn't have power mirrors. That was actually uh, something that you got with the Plus model, as was keyless entry. You actually gotta stick the key into this one, even though it does have power locks. I don't know if you would consider this a quirk, but one weird part about the Soul is its starter motor. It sounds like the standard audio clip that they would use in like an 80s movie. <laughs> So right now we're cruising 70 miles per hour where we are about 3200 rpm the engine does buzz there's a you know fair amount of wind noise not as bad as i was thinking considering this is a literal cube but it's just something that i flat out wouldn't recommend if you're driving on the highway a lot it also doesn't really get that good a gas mileage if you're on the highway part probably due for that reason as well and despite those high cruising rpms passing power at highway speeds is heavily lacking like prepare your depth perception slow to make matters worse for the 1.6 liter there's no cruise control on the base however it's a cheap compact with an engine so small it looks like it's hiding in the engine bay there's gonna be some corners cut what pleasantly surprised me was the interior build quality and passenger comfort while basic by today's standards, the inside of the Kia Soul was a big departure for the brand, especially in the small car class. There was a lot going on, so let's try to dissect that. So first off, materials. As you'd expect, it's all plastic. And on the base model, it is all black plastic. It's just a sea of dark, cheap materials. But this is what I expect in this kind of car, and it's you know, held up really well. Nothing in here is really creaking too much or rattling too much. I'm not seeing anything falling apart. This has probably been in use for 12 years. It has over 90,000 miles. This is fairly impressive. Although I do really wish I had a center console. That's something that comes on the plus trim. And there's not really even any soft touch on the door panel. Now it does feel like something that would be very easy to clean because every material in here, except for the carpet, feels like it can be hosed. It feels like everything here is pretty well placed. I like that the AC controls and the radio controls are put somewhat higher up in the cabin so it's easy to get to really quickly you don't need to take your eyes off the road too far you can see where like some other cars would have like the premium sound system would have another center channel speaker right here it actually does have the ability to pulse colors and like sing to your music that's something that's standard on the exclaim and sport optional there on the plus a feature that gets you into the funky mood of the soul Base cars just had four speakers with an aux input. All others added Bluetooth and two tweeters. At least every car came with AC and power windows. For high life seekers, a sunroof was optional on all but the base, standard on the Exclaim. Refreshed models offered heated front seats and leather on the Exclaim. Those later years also got a touchscreen with navigation and a backup camera on the top spec, optional on the plus so you could get the convenience features that people cared about but let's talk more about these seats so here at the base model i have good back support there's just enough bolstering it's reasonably comfortable despite it lacking much adjustability front back and recline that's it if you stepped up to the plush, you got a height adjustment. Uh, no lumbar adjustment was available, unfortunately. But you did have some other fun color options like a red and black interior on the Sport. A sand and black interior was available too, all of which added a little zest to the sole. One weird thing is the lopsided steering wheel. It looks normal, but the horn is way off center, which drives me mildly insane during parking lot maneuvers. So there's plenty of storage in the front. You have some pretty long door pockets here, four cup holders up front, one of which is big enough for a large bottle, a 40 ounce hydro flask, if you will. I also like how I have plenty of room in here. I'm six foot three and my knees have more than enough space to kind of relax. Headroom is plentiful. The only real comfort downside here is that the steering wheel is tilt only. With the front seat set 
in a comfortable yet not excessive position. I am surprisingly comfortable back here. Again, an almost unnecessary amount of headroom. So, and the seats are kind of cushy. They're not very long, but provide pretty good support. And the floor also helps that as it is pretty low. The weird part is, and this is the same for the front, uh, the only bit of soft material is actually on the door card itself. Anyway, you got a couple cup holders, little cubby grab handle, that's about it. If you're trying to compare the Kia Soul to something like a Honda Fit, this is not as spacious. The space here is just not very long. And also for not having independent rear suspension, it's not as tall as I'd like it to be either. It's at least somewhat wide and you can fold down your back seats and it does come down really flat. So with the seats configured like this, you could haul a fair amount of cargo. It's just lacking to some other vehicles of a similar size, but at least the Soul actually gives you a comfortable back seat. So far, the Soul feels like a practical, pleasant people mover for the city, but this actually beat my expectations on back roads too. In practical usage, it does still feel potent enough. Now, another thing that makes it a little weird is the clutch. It's like you're just stepping on a very firm pillow. It's just kind of vague in that sense. The shifter is better. It at least does give you some, you know, reassurance that you're in a gear. The modest throw lengths and feedback provide a dash of satisfaction under normal driving. I'd hands down go with the stick over the four speed auto for pre refresh models. Just prepare for that stiff clutch. The steering also surprisingly gives me just a, a a tad bit of feedback here, it's, it's kind of slow. Kia improved the steering for 2012 to make it more responsive, but this did result in reliability woes. There's a little bit of body roll, but the car does change direction in a reasonable amount of time um, and feels kind of tight. Maybe it's because it's got a really short wheelbase. It does come off a bit more nimble and fun than I was really anticipating. It's kind of correct midway through. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised with the rear suspension. It does feel kind of, uh, dare I say, poised. Now on some bad roads, this is moderately comfortable. Granted, the last car I drove over here was a uh, 1999 Mazda Miata, but still, the, the suspension in here definitely has been paid attention to in terms of maintenance. So I get an accurate representation of how the car actually handles, and it's a comfortable, relatively composed vehicle. If you live in a city with really harsh roads, the Kia Soul shouldn't punish you too much, especially here with the 15 inch wheels. But some have reported a harsh ride with the 18 inch wheels and sport tuned suspension. One thing that shouldn't beat you up too bad for 2010 and 2011 is unexpected repairs. Complaints on these are overall pretty minimal with some inconsistent issues reported. Looking at consumer reviews online shows high owner recommendation rates for these years. 2012 to 2013 models saw revised engines and steering that both provided many complaints. Some engines would consume oil, something Kias are notorious for, and they would develop various issues resulting in engine failure or even fires in some rare cases. The steering would also develop a clunk and there was a massive catalytic converter recall. While severe engine problems don't seem to affect most, if you can and you don't mind less power, I would try to pick up a pre refresh soul. One of my favorite aspects of the Kia Soul is probably the driving position and visibility outward. You have giant windows and it kind of, and this is going to sound weird, it does remind me a little bit of the Forester with, you know, how I almost feel like I'm kind of sitting on top of the car and the dashboard is really nice and low, windshield's big, it's confidence inspiring. Like I think this would be an enjoyable little car to just drive around town. Again, if you have the 1.6 liter, it's just fine around town, especially with this gearing. It's comfortable and just gets the job done. While I might personally pick a Honda Fit for its more agile handling, fun gearbox, great reputation, and clever packaging, the Soul feels more substantial with its wide cabin, high ride height, good features, and more comprehensive customization. Going into this review, I thought a used Kia Soul was the official car of, well, ma'am, we can't get you approved on that old Honda. No, 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 don't worry. I got the perfect car. Either that or the default car given to sorority girls in 2017, but I see the appeal now. 
This may look cute, but it also has a little personality on the road and in the cabin. Quality is good. Four adults can sit comfortably in it, and it's relatively cheap compared to the used competition. I guess I was fixated on the image associated with the car to the point where I assumed its strengths were just surface deep. If you're in the market for a cheap, practical car with a little life to it, the first gen Kia Soul easily deserves your attention. Just be cautious with post refresh models. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like to help me defeat the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the bell for more. And thank you to my loyal Patreons. I'll catch you in the next one.